in this video, uh, I'm going to be doing another uh, live coding style video. Uh, I'm going to try and build out a, uh, an Ionic component. And if you haven't seen one of these uh, style of videos before, basically what I do is I just have this um, vague idea of what I want to build, and then I walk through building it on screen. And uh, so the idea is that uh, since I don't really know how I'm going to do it, uh, I can kind of walk through how I'd go about building something in a more realistic way. Uh, rather than knowing up front uh, that everything is going to work. And so what I'd like to build is I want to um, create a little sort of expandable uh, component. So I've got this list here from the Ionic documentation. And what I want to do is just have a sort of section in here that and when I click on this list, it's going to expand the particular item that I clicked on. And then if I were to click that again, then that would um, that expandable section would shrink away. And I suppose uh, potentially the use case for that here would be um, you know, to see a little bit more information about a particular list item, you could click that. And then if you wanted to see the full view of that item, perhaps then you would click on the view button and it would take you to the actual uh, detail page for that item. And so what I'm going to do is create a an expandable component. So nothing specific to this list, but just a, a little component that can be expanded and, and shrunk. So before I get started though, uh, I'm gonna set this list up in uh, the application that I just generated. Uh, so I'm just gonna copy this and we're just going to put that onto the, uh, the home page. And since uh, this is referencing an image that we don't have, I'm just gonna change this to a placeholder link. Uh, if you've never used placeholder, basically it's just a um, well, placeholder image service. So all you have to do is just link to placeholder.it and then just give the uh, dimensions that you want. So if I do 100, that's going to give me a 100 by 100 picture. Uh, but you can also do uh, different dimensions like 100 by 200 uh, if you wanted to do that. So I'll save that and we're going to serve it. Um, I already have this serving actually. Let me just reserve it. And we'll just wait for that to pop up here. Okay, cool. So we've got our one uh, list item there now. Uh, but what I want to do is obviously have a few more to play around with. And so what I do when I just, uh, when I want some just test items to play around with, uh, what I do is just go into the, the TypeScript file and I just create a, a class member, uh, we'll call it say items, and I just uh, generate a new array and uh, pass in say um, 10 here. So that's going to create an empty array uh, with ten, uh, 10 elements in it for us. So if I then just loop over that with an ng4 directive, that's going to give us, uh, it's going to give us uh, 10, or it's going to repeat this item 10 times. So it's just going to be the same data for each item, but it's just a quick way to get some test data in there. Uh, so let me just check that that worked. Cool, so it looks like that is working fine. So as I mentioned, what I want to do is have some kind of expandable component. So I'm going to drop that component inside of here somewhere. And then I want to have that be uh, triggered somehow so that when I say click this uh, item here, uh, that uh, event would uh, trigger some function. And then that would cause that component to expand. Uh, so to get started, I'm going to create that component using the uh, command line interface here. Uh, so I'm just going to run ionic g component, and we'll call this, um, I'm always terrible at naming things. Uh, let's just go with expandable. So once that finishes generating, you would see that pop in here under components. If we open that up, we see we have a, uh, a expandable component here now. And if we look in the app.module.ts file, uh, you can also see that this is automatically uh, inserted into the declarations for us and imported as well. Uh, so we don't actually have to do that manually anymore, which is very cool. Uh, but it does also generate this module file, which was used uh, or is used for uh, lazy loading, which we're not doing. So we're just going to delete that file because uh, we don't need it. And I'm also just going to clean up this component a bit. I don't need this boilerplate uh, code that's added by default. So I'm just going to delete some of that and this text variable as well and I might just keep the console.log statement. So what I might do actually is jump back into this template here and I'm just gonna write hello just so we can verify that the component is working and then if I dump that in here I will put it 
under the main content here. So I'll just use uh, the selector for that, which is uh, expandable. So if I just write expandable, I have that as my uh, element here. If we take a look through the browser now, we should see, um, well, we should just see hello injected um, where this is. Okay, so you can see that hello is being uh, injected there fine, so that's good. So now we just need to actually make that component uh, do something. And so what I think I want to be able to do is I want to have uh, two inputs on this, I think. So this is usually what I do when I'm uh, creating a component. Uh, I just use it uh, in a way that uh, in the template here that you know, is the way that I want it to work. And then I sort of build from that and actually make it you know, do those things and support the, the inputs I'm trying to give it. So I want to be able to give it a, um, I want to give it a height that we're going to set initially. Uh, so I'm going to call this option our input rather, I'll call it expand height. So that's the height that it's going to expand to. And so I'd set that to, um, we'll say 200. And then I also want to give it a um, sort of a Boolean value that's going to say whether or not it should uh, be expanded. And so I'll just call that input expanded and we'd be able to set that to say uh, true. And now eventually what I am going to do is toggle this value. So I might just set that up now. Um, so if we set up a value here called um, item expanded perhaps, and we set that to a Boolean value that we'll set to, um, we'll set it to false by default because that makes more sense. And then I can supply that value through here. If I use the square brackets, that's going to bind to that value. And we called that item expanded. So now we'd be able to toggle whether or not this is expanded just by changing this value here. And as long as I spell that correctly. And we could do the same uh, with the expand height too if we wanted to um, be able to modify that. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to worry about that. I'll probably just keep that uh, static. And I also don't want to have um, just hello injected. What I want to be able to do is uh, supply my own content in here. Uh, so I'll just write hello again for now. Hello people. Uh, and then in order to get that into um, our component, we need to project it. So this is this currently is the template for that component. Uh, but what I want to do is take this content here and make that the template. And so in order to do that, we, you need to use uh, something called content projection. So I can just write ng content and ng content. And that's going to take everything that is inside of this component here and it's going to project it, uh, project it into the template. So if we load this up again now, hopefully we should see hello people there instead of uh, hello like it was before. Uh, I've got some uh, console error here. Uh, what did we do wrong? Oh, yeah, it can't bind to expanded because it's not a known property of expandable. Uh, so that's because we're using these inputs that don't exist yet. So uh, now is probably a good time to actually uh, define those. So if we come into the actual uh, the class for our expandable component here, we need to define those inputs. Uh, so first we're going to have to import input uh, from the Angular library. And then we can just set them up above the constructor. So we have an input called uh, expanded. Is that correct? Yes. And we'll call that one expanded. So that means we're going to be able to access that uh, input through referencing this dot expanded throughout this class. Now you can call that whatever you want. And we'll do the same for the expanded height. And so now if I add an ng after view init hook here, uh, which runs after the view is initialized, uh, so at that point these should be uh, ready to be grabbed. If I try to log these out, we should be able to see those values. So I'll log out this dot expanded and this dot expanded height. Okay, so in the browser here we have uh, things being logged out. So one is working, so on line 17, the expanded value is getting logged out fine. Uh, but we're getting undefined for expanded height. So uh, let's try and figure out why that's happening. That's because I called it expand height, not expanded height. So uh, I'll just change that in here and then that should start working. Uh, so now we can see that both of those values are being logged out. And that's actually a string value there. What I might do just to make things a bit easier 
is I am going to define this expand height uh, in our home um, home file here, just like we did with the item expanded value. So I'll just change this to um, we we'll call this item item expand height, and then we'll set that in here as well. Uh, we'll just set that to two hundred, and we should still be able to see that uh, in here once it refreshes, hopefully. Okay, cool. So we have the false value uh, for the expand, which determines whether or not that the component should be expanded. And then we have 200, which is the height that it will expand to. So right now that is, uh, it's set to false. So that means that we shouldn't be able to see hello people now. It should not be expanded. We should not be able to see it. Uh, so let's work on that first. We'll try and get it so that by default, if we've supplied false there, uh, it's not going to show us this. And so what I'm going to do to achieve that is I'm just going to define a variable here called uh, current height. Uh, it's going to be a number. And by default, that's going to just be zero. And what I want to do in this ng after view, uh, in this ng after view init uh, function is basically if I want, um, if it's expanded, I want the height to be whatever the expand height is. If it's not, then I want it to be, um, I want it to be zero. So what I'm going to uh, do here is uh, I want it to be I want it to be not visible di uh, by default. So uh, if I'm going to come into this uh, CSS file here and I'm going to set the height of this to uh, zero. Uh, but I also want to be able to change that to say I will just do this um, kind of manually for now. So we'll say well I want it to be uh, 200. So we're going to create a an expanded class in here, and we're going to set that height to 200. And so what we want to do now is we want to optionally uh, or conditionally apply this expanded class uh, only when um, it should be expanded. And so what we can do to achieve that is um, I might just actually add a, a wrapper sort of around this. Uh, we'll call it, just call it expand wrapper. And then we'll target that in here instead. So we'll say expand wrapper. So that can have a uh, height of uh, zero. And then if we have that expand class on there, we want it to have a height of 200. Uh, so I'm just going to add the important attribute to that. And so now we just want to conditionally apply that uh, expanded class there. And so in order to do that, what I'm going to do is use this syntax where uh, with the square brackets here. So what I can do is class dot, uh, was it expanded? So we can conditionally apply that by assigning this to, if we bind that to a Boolean value again, that's going to toggle this class on and off based on whatever this value is. And so if we hook into the expanded value that we already have, so that's already a Boolean that we're going to toggle off and on. Uh, we should be able to use that to also toggle this class on and off. So if we do class.expanded equals expanded, which will link it to this input here, that should apply uh, this class only when this value is set to true, as in the value that we're passing in uh, here. So we'll see if that works. So uh, by default, uh, we shouldn't be able to see anything. And then if we flip that value to true, we should be able to. Okay, so we don't see anything by default there, which is good. Uh, so just to check that that actually does work, we'll just manually switch this to true. Okay, so we're still not seeing anything there. So let's, uh, we'll inspect that and we'll see uh, why we can't see it. Uh, so I'll just search for that expandable. So it looks like that height is being, um, Invalid property value. What have I done wrong there? I forgot to do pixels 200 px. Let's try that again. Okay, so that is um, Expanded now. So we have that 200 high uh, Area that's being expanded because we set that to true. Uh, obviously, it's kind of destroyed this um, uh, List here we'd need to style this appropriately so it could accommodate uh, this big area as well, but uh, the main point is that that is working now. Uh, so now we need to just be able to uh, toggle that 
um, ourselves rather than having to rely on um, uh, just changing that value manually. And so I'm going to try and quickly do that. I'm actually running low on battery here, so I might not be able to take this video as far as I wanted, um, but I'll probably, whatever I don't get to, I'll, I'll follow up in a blog post or something like that. Uh, so we'll probably just end up sticking with this simple example for now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I already have that. Uh, I created this array, just a simple array, just so we could have 10 items. Uh, but now I'm actually going to modify this to be a little bit more uh, complex. So what I'm going to do is um, it's going to change that into still a blank array here, and I'm going to assign it uh, my own values manually here. So I'm going to say this dot items equals and we're going to add a few items here. I'm not going to worry about adding data here. I mainly am just interested in having some kind of expanded value. Uh, so all these are going to be false. Uh, so obviously I could also have say like a title in there if we wanted to uh, display that in the list, but I'm not going to worry about that because it's not really relevant. So I'm going to just paste out a few of these. So we should still, uh, we, if we refresh this now, we should still see um, uh, some list items in here. We should only have, what is that, seven, six, seven, nine, something like that. Uh, so we still have nine items here now, which is good. Uh, we're actually going to get rid of um, this value because we don't need that anymore. And in here, instead of using uh, the item expander variable that we were just using, we're actually going to use the value from the item itself. So we have a property there called expanded on the item. So we're just going to reference item.expanded instead. And then that should be based on this uh, rather than that variable we had before. Uh, so right now in here, it's they're all set to false, so we can't see any of them. Uh, let's just check that that actually does work. So if I change one of these to true, we should see the hello people thing pop up there. And it does. So now we just need to programmatically change those. Uh, so what I'm going to do is add a function here called expand item. That's going to take in the item. And then that's going to set uh, the uh, the expanded property on that to the opposite of whatever it currently is. So we say item.expanded equals not item.expanded. So if it's false, it will become true. If it's true, it will become false. And then we just need to trigger that function from our ion item here. Uh, so we should probably change that to a button ion item because we're clicking on it now. And we'll call that um, uh, expand item function and we'll pass in the item to that. And uh, sorry if I am rushing a little bit now. I didn't realize how low the battery was. So I was trying to get through this. Okay, so I'll just refresh that. And um, so if I click on this now, cool, that pops up. And if I click it again, it goes away. And so that's quite an abrupt uh, transition, obviously. Uh, so what we can also do to make this look a little bit nicer is to add a transition property on that. And so if I set a transition of say one, uh, maybe 0 0.5 seconds, we'll do a linear transformation, uh, a transition rather. And so rather than just instantly setting, changing the height from zero to 200, it's going to do that uh, more slowly or smoothly and slowly. So again, I'll, ref uh, I'll just refresh this. And if I click on something now, you see how it just kind of nicely uh, expands and collapses now rather than just flicking on and off. And maybe we even set that like a little bit faster, set it to 0 0.2 seconds, speed things up a little bit. Yeah, and that's kind of feels nice and snappy now doing that. Uh, so I did want to make this a little bit more, I'll take this a little bit further, I guess. Um, obviously, this is still uh, pretty bare bones. The functionality itself works, but in this context, it doesn't look great because, you know, obviously it doesn't really work well with our list as it is currently, but uh, I am running low on battery, uh, so I will probably just cut it here and I'll yeah, perhaps uh, put up a blog post with a little bit more of a polished version. Uh, I also did want to make the uh, height configurable as well but again uh, yeah perhaps I'll get that uh, get to that in a blog post or something like that uh, so yeah I hope you enjoyed this video I um, hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one